which even makes an untouchable feel that he or she is somebody. So I should not oppose atheism. I should know more about atheism. So he asked Ramaswamy to work with my father. And in the meanwhile, another what we call the Quit India Movement in 1942, all of us went to jails. After returning from the jail, Ramaswamy went to Gandhi and they had a long talk on atheism. So he said, now I want to see your mentor. Please invite Gora on my behalf. And so Ramaswamy wrote a letter to my father inviting him. And then Gandhi told my father after listening to him, I can neither say my theism is right nor your atheism is wrong. Both are seekers after truth. Only future will decide whether you are in the right or I am in the right. Then I may go your way or you may go my way or both of us may go a third way. So you go ahead and I support you even though your method is against mine. And his talks with Gandhi and his association with Gandhi is in this book, An Atheist with Gandhi, and then some books are here. The American edition of this book is brought out just a month ago. And because the Indian edition is there, and one of my friends, Mr. Shikumar Podar, he's not an atheist, but he feels like Gandhi, that atheists are also truth seekers. So he wanted to bring this book to atheists in the United States and as well as to the theists in the United States. So he feels let theists also read this book and then know that atheism is also seeking truth and Gandhi's views on atheism. From the childhood, I have been entertaining an idea that I should go around the world and then build a world atheist movement. Because as a child, I read about Buddhism. When Shankaracharya, who opposed Buddhism and re-established Hinduism, after that one, Buddhists were killed in India and then Buddhists were driven away out of India. Then those Buddhists, they went to Southeast Asia, to Sri Lanka, to Burma, to Thailand, to Japan, to China, and they took Buddhism there. And Buddha said, to do good and to be good, God is not necessary. This he said 2,500 years ago. And also, in Indian culture, the early people, they were seeking truth. They were not seeking God. They were seeking truth about their belief in God. So many people felt there was a creator who created the creation. And some others then put the question, if there should be a creator for everything to be created, then who created God? So there was no answer. And so those people said, let us not think of God. Let us start with humans and the creation. So in Rig Veda, which is the oldest recorded knowledge of the human society, there is a hymn on creation. In that hymn it is said that nobody knows whether there is a creator or not. Nobody knows if there were to be a creator, that creator created the God, uh, created the creation or not. But all of us know that creation has come first and gods have come later. <laughs> so, what we call the creation that has created a God. That means human beings imagined God. So God is the imagination of the human beings. This was some 4,000, 5,000 years ago in Rig Veda was written. So for India, atheism is as old 
as Rigveda, as knowledge. As Gandhi said, nonviolence is as old as hills. So also, I say, atheism is as old as human being himself or herself. And at that time, the seekers of truth, they did not feel that they belong to any particular religion. So they said, the atheistic truth seekers, they said, Loka samasta sukhino bhavanto, let all the people all over the world be happy. Sarve jana sukhino bhavanto, all people anywhere in the world be happy. So they were thinking of universe and the people spread all over the universe. So there was no nation, there was no religion, there was no sectarian feeling, there was no hatred towards anybody. So atheism stands for universalism. Atheism stands for one humanity. Atheism stands for the truth that all are equal and all should be together. So, when we think like, and another aspect also, why atheism is universal. Religions have started with local needs and local gods. So when with local needs and local gods religions started, they became sectarian and selfish to their local existence. So though all religions said that God is one, every religion claimed that their God is that one God. So to prove that their God is that one God, and everybody should accept their God, so they went to war with people belonging to other religions. So your God is not that one God. My God is that one God. So you should accept my God. You should accept my religion. That's why religions have created a lot of hatred, a lot of violence, and a lot of wars. So that's why religions are socially sectarian. Religions are socially divisive force. Religions are socially local. They are not for the whole universe. People spread all over the universe. Then slowly, nations have taken the place of the religions. So nations are politically sectarian. They are politically local. In 1977, there was a big cyclone and tidal wave in Andhra Pradesh. 18,000 people died because of the sea coming at the height of 10 feet and 12 feet onto the houses on the shores of Bay of Bengal. At that time, myself, my wife and the volunteers from the Atheist Center, we jumped into action in rescuing people and then in rehabilitating people and giving relief to people. At that time, the state government took me as their unofficial representative, advisor to the state government. Till then in India, if Hindus came, they give relief only to Hindus. They won't give relief to Muslims and Christians, even though they are dying. If Christians came, they would give relief only to Christians, not to others. If Muslims came, they would give relief only to Muslims, not to others. Likewise, if the caste organizations came, if Brahmin caste organization, they would give relief only to Brahmins. If the Kamma organizations come, they would give relief only to Kammas. If the Kapu organizations come, they give relief only to Kapus, like that. And at that time, there was a quarrel between the state government and the central government who should lift about 18,000 dead human bodies and more than 100,000 dead animals' bodies because they were killed by the sea water. They did not give any bad smell and then no spread of any cholera or like thing there. It was, they were lying there for nearly one month. So I used to tell them, 
you first pick up your cast people from the bodies, dead bodies, and you bury them or you cremate them, and then come and help to your caste people or your religious people. They said, how can we know? Only we can know which body is of male body and which body of female body. We don't know which body is a Brahmin body, which body is a Kamma body, which body is a copper body. We don't know which body is a Christian body, which body is a Hindu body, which body is a Muslim body. We don't know. We cannot. So when you cannot differentiate between a dead body, why do you want to differentiate between the living human beings? To make them live. So the religions are ready to kill people in propagation of their particular religion against all other religions. But they are not ready to help people to live. So when atheism says that I don't have, need a God, I don't need a religion because we want to help people to live here and now, freely, happily, together as one humanity. So at that time, uh, uh, let me tell you this also, some of the Roman Catholic priests, they like, at that time some Roman Catholic priests in India were very much influenced by the revolutionary theology of the Latin America. And you know very well revolutionary theology of Latin America. So they felt when Ravanam is doing good work, we have to say that Ravanam is doing good work and atheist center is doing good work. So they went and then told their friends, look here, Lavanam is doing good work, and atheist center is doing good work. So other priests did not like it. Tell, to accept that Lavanam is doing good work and atheist center is doing good work, that means we are accepting devil is doing good work. How can we accept that devil is doing good work? So they went to the bishop. Bishop said, yes, I know Lavanam. I know Mrs. Ramanam, I know Gora, I know Mrs. Ramanam's father, Joshua. They are doing good work, and when they are doing good work, we have to accept that they are doing good work, and their work is recognized by the state government, by the central government. So there is nothing wrong in telling that Ramanam is doing good work and atheists are doing good work. Then they went to Archbishop in Sikandrabad. Archbishop said, I never met Lavanam, but I have heard of him, and he is doing very good work, and we have to accept that atheists are also doing good work. They were not satisfied. Then they wrote to Vatican. Then Vatican asked a Catholic priest from Goa to visit me and then send a report. Then he came and visited me and visited my work, and it seemed he sent an excellent report supporting me that yes, Lavanam is doing good work and atheists are doing good work. These people didn't satisfy with his report. So they said he is an Indian. So several of the Indians are being carried away by the secularization of India through our constitution. So please send, send someone, preferably an Italian from Rome, 